Hey there, thanks for tuning into Duckworks. I'm Chris, and today we are going to be combining every single LEGO Minecraft set that is minifigure scale from 2014 all the way up to now in January of 2023. So LEGO Minecraft has been going on as a minifigure scale theme for a long time. You can see every single mob and character player right here. You've got all the different skins, the villagers, the creepers, you have the skeletons, of course the iron golems, pigs, cows, all the animals. Basically, if it's a Minecraft mob, it is featured on this particular wall and this is really where I display all of the different unique Minecraft characters where you can see the different animals and how they put together the builds of different characters over the years. It's interesting seeing how these builds have evolved but the focus of this video is not going to be on the figures but instead going to be on all of these sets themselves. So if you do want to see each and every one of the individual figures you can see them right here but now let's go on and take a look at the sets. So LEGO Minecraft has had an interesting journey, especially with Minecraft partnering with LEGO. Back in the day, before they even were making minifigure skill sets, they released a little micro world set under the LEGO Kuso brand, which eventually would become LEGO Ideas. You can see it over on my mid-size LEGO Ideas shelf here. It was just a little micro world. This was not minifigure scale, so we're not including that in this video. And they also put out a few more sets after it was so popular. They put out a village set as well as the end set and a nether set. So it was really interesting seeing so many different types of little micro worlds being created for Minecraft until eventually it came time to actually venture out into the minifigure scale sets. So in 2014, LEGO decided, you know what? We're gonna make LEGO Minecraft a theme of its own. It's not just gonna have these little micro worlds, it's going on past beyond just the LEGO Ideas Kuso branding, and we're really just going to be doing an entire minifigure scale style for the micro world for Minecraft. And so that's how it all began, and pretty much they've used a very similar system ever since. Here you can see on these shelves, just these four right here, are every single LEGO Minecraft set ever. Yes, it does go all the way through. And what we're going to do is I'm going to take every single one of these out and walk you through the process of making my own LEGO Minecraft world. Really excited to do this. There's a lot of stuff that I want to consider here in terms of the groupings of certain things. So for instance, we've got like a village area and I definitely want to have a progression in terms of feeling like you're leveling up in difficulty as we probably go from like this side of the table all the way to the other side. It's all blank right now because I have it all blank ready for the world to be created. And without further ado, let's jump right into the creative process of combining every single LEGO Minecraft set and making it its own massive Minecraft world. Let's go! So one quick thing just as we get started here, most of this video is going to be talking through the process by which I try to decide to lay out each and every one of the individual LEGO Minecraft sets, but if you only are interested in seeing the final full layout and don't really care about how we arrive there, you can definitely just jump forwards, I've put a link in the description below or a timestamp where you can jump forwards and just take a look at the journey of one single character, starting off from the very first house on one side of the display here, and working their way all the way through the villages, through the nether, and finally making their way to the end. So that timestamp is in the description below if you want to check it out. This is what the final product looks like, where I really tried to arrange things based off of different biomes and different types of regions. You have a bit of a mining sector, a village sector, and then you go through the tracks all the way into the nether. Thankfully, there are actually two official LEGO nether portal sets, one of which actually has a railroad track going directly through the portal itself, so that made things very easy. And I've basically tried to connect up every single railroad piece as best I could in combining all of these different individual components. Of course, you make your way through the nether and then back out on the other side, grouping together the icy stuff, the desert stuff, and then we've got some beachside areas, some water-like areas, an ocean monument that's apparently been brought up from the ocean, and overall, this was a really fun project to work on. I, again, did do something like this in the past. That was, I believe, in like 2020 or 2021, but obviously there have been a lot more new Minecraft releases since then. I've also managed to go back and buy all of the discontinued LEGO Minecraft sets I did not already own since that initial video, and hopefully this one has a little bit more of a dynamic camera as well. That last video was pretty rudimentary. I literally set up the camera on a tripod and filmed myself for an hour putting together the Minecraft sets. This is a similar length, but we actually have some different kinds of looks and pieces into how a minifigure would be traveling, so hopefully it's just a little bit more interesting than that last one. Overall, this was an absolute blast to put together. I hope you enjoy watching this as much as I enjoyed putting it together myself. And with that, I think it's time to move away from the finished diorama and now jump back to the beginning where 
all my Minecraft sets were still stacked together on different shelves. They were pretty disorganized and just in a clutter on all the shelves, and I basically had to take each one of them out and figure out how exactly all of them could be factored in together. So here's the final product, and let's go in right now. Okay, so we are down here, we have a brand new blank space to display all the Minecraft sets on, and I actually just recently got these Minecraft sets here, which finally complete my collection. I previously did a video, I think a couple years ago, where I did all the Minecraft sets I owned up to that point, and I have been plugging the gaps in my collection, where I finally have managed to get on BrickLink the last three old discontinued sets I didn't have, the Ice Spikes, the original fortress, and the first crafting box, which I used the pieces to build this model, which was basically just one of the eight options, and then kind of built on the top and around the sides because it had a ton of extra pieces. I also have gotten a couple of the 2023 January Minecraft sets, which were not sent to me by the LEGO Ambassador Network yet, but we still have a lot more to add on because, as you can see, I have three full drawers over here of just Minecraft sets, so we have... A full drawer here, so that's all Minecraft, and then we have another level right here, so this is all just Minecraft stuff. And then we have another drawer here, so more Minecraft stuff here, and that is not all, because everything in here is related to LEGO Minecraft. So, to be completely honest, I do not know if we're going to have enough space on just this platform to include all the sets together. We're going to have to tighten things up a bit. In the last video we did like this, I managed to have a little kind of minecart track going through the entire thing, and that spread things out a lot, but that also meant that it was a very, very wide space, and we're working on a little bit more limited space this time, and a lot more sets, because it's been at least a couple years since I put out that video, so there's been a lot more Minecraft sets. Of course, the biggest one, and the one that we do have to start with, is the Mountain Cave here. This was the largest LEGO Minecraft set released at its time, and it still is the largest LEGO Minecraft set to date. And I feel like this is a good starting off point, where this is obviously the most important, kind of the focal point. We'll put this mountain in the very center right here and go all the way back, so I just want to make sure this is pushed all the way back because I'm sure we'll need all the space we can get. And, of course, you have Steve in his minecart here, so you can kind of start his journey going down the mountain like so. So, this is here, and we're just going to start taking stuff out, and particularly, I'm going to try to see what we can do to see if there's any way to actually get the track built up again. There's a little bit of an explosion feature here, so you can actually cause these blocks to explode. And that reveals a way for the minecarts to actually be able to exit this cave and be added onto a different track. So I think what we'll do here is I'll go ahead and push this all the way to the side. And this will be kind of like the mountain in the corner here. And I'm just going to start hooking up some other railroad track Minecraft sets because most of them do follow this exact system. So starting off here, let me just start by pulling out some of these Minecraft sets because there's a lot. And we're going to go pretty systematically one by one. So... We have the new Panda House, and we've got the kind of Ninja Temple there, so that was a nice set to get. And I'm gonna go for that one, but we want to just be pretty methodical about this. So I'm gonna take out all of the different sets here, and what we're gonna do is, I think it's gonna be a cool progression to start from kind of the overworld section, and there is a set that allows the minecart to go through a portal, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through a portal to the nether, and finally go from the nether back out, and go end things with the end of portal transporting us right to the end, kind of similar like how we did on the first video, except this time we will be kind of just having more sets, and maybe a little bit better of a layout, so we will see. So let me first just systematically remove all these Minecraft sets. As you can see, there are a lot of new ones, like the 2023 Sword Outpost here. But the one that I'm looking at is right here. This is the Creeper Mine. So obviously this is a long track of rails there. And we also want to get this particular mine shaft because I guess there's some aspect of the carts here as well. So that has some track elements. Let's get this back up there. And we also have, thankfully, I, I did group together most of the railroad track ones together for the most part. So we've got a lot of them just back here. Let's get the barn out of here. We have this farm area, the farm cottage right here. And all of these are going to go on. And I'm going to try to make these a little bit more kind of going from the easier, the home areas where it's kind of peaceful to the more dangerous areas. So that would be a fun thing to do. 
and of course hook it up to this, which is the big mindset. So let me first start with this. It's a little bit flimsy because this is just connected based on just a couple bricks here and there, but let's see what we can do. Just be very careful taking this out. Come on. Okay. So we're going to start with this and let's see where we can connect this up because I really want to have the actual minecart pieces connect. Is there a way that we can connect it there? I, hmm. I don't know. We may need to just take some other pieces because we have the cart going in here and we have the cart going out there. So it's kind of just a one, like a loop, a 180 degree loop. So what we'll do is we'll also take this set, which is the creeper mine, take that right here. So we have that, we've got some other blocks here and there for a part of the mindset in general. So let me just get this reset. So just putting them on the board for now. And what are the other mine cart sets? So we have some sky towers here, which are from, I think the 2020 wave or the 2021 wave. We have, I mean, there's like a little bit of a railroad section, but that one isn't really that useful. For, I think this is the bedrock adventure set. We have the Llama Village, so this whole whole thing is the whole brick-built Llama Village here, which is a, a nice set, but we'll, we'll put all the villages together in some area. Let's see, Modern Treehouse. This is a really nice one, actually. This is quite a good build, but again, not what we're looking for right now. And we just keep on going here. There's a treehouse back there, some other pieces, TNT area. Okay, no minecart stuff, so let's move on to the top here. And to quickly scan, we have a lot of different village areas. I'm not seeing a lot of track though, so let's check this area right here. And do we have any track? Oh, there's like a couple of track pieces. So we're gonna start taking these out because we are going to need to showcase, or the goal is to showcase every single Minecraft set all combined. So we're gonna need all these to come out anyways. We've got the Warden Battle over there. Let's see, we have, um, that's a village area. Some others, just small bits and pieces of villages. This one's one of the uh, ones based on the newer updates. So it's a mix of some of the newer and the older Minecraft sets. But what we're gonna do is let me first take out this right here. So this is like one straight track of railroad carts. So that could be useful to have for our cart there. Anything else here? I really thought there was more. I mean, I had it set up somehow. So there definitely is a way to do it. This is a whole collapsible area for the boss battle for the warden there so we'll set that aside i'm not seeing that many more tracks here so we're gonna just i mean i'm gonna need to take these all out anyway but we'll do that a little bit later and maybe all of our tracks are here oh yeah there's a lot of tracks here okay okay hmm how are we going to do this so let me get the swamp area out first the witch's hut and you can see right here we've got the nether railway, but I don't want to focus too much on the nether right now. We may need to because we have a couple of different railway sections. So we have one right here, which is, this is the portal set. So when you have the overworld tracks going here and then you go directly into the nether on the other side. So this is going to be a useful piece. You also have this entire chunk is just one like railway chunk. So let's get like the first house out of here. The pieces are just falling off. But obviously, we're not trying to keep all the sets together. The goal is just to try and get all of the different pieces connected. So thankfully, the sets don't matter too much. Let's get our railway track there. Now, that is a nether section. So we may need to break that up. Are there any other railway sections that we want to get here? There's the shipwreck, which is a nice one to have, but not right now see just a lot of village stuff i'm gonna try to get each of these platforms out a lot of these open platforms are just for the village so we'll set those aside for now and we may have gotten pretty much all of the railway pieces that we have of course there's the cart i'm not seeing any more so let's see how we can connect this up okay so what is the best way to do this well okay i think hmm the best way is probably what we want to do is first connect this up somehow. There's not, are there no more railroad pieces? Huh. I really thought there were more. Hmm. Okay. I'm not sure how I did it last time, to be honest. Well, we have one segment here, and this is again, one of those like wall pieces that blows up. 
So you can collapse the wall here to allow this track to be exposed, but this track doesn't really go anywhere. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to, oh, don't want to take the entire thing apart, but I do want to detach most of this section because we just need this to extend outward. So what can we do here? So just remembering that that goes there, can we take the railroad track and put it, hmm, maybe not for this one. We're gonna have to play around with this a little bit. Maybe the only thing that will connect is the creeper mine, I think facing the other way. I mean, obviously this connects, but it also is hanging off the back by a lot. So again, we are constricted on space, but this may be the only way that we're able to connect it here. Okay, so we do have our track connected there. It spits out this way, so that's not super ideal is the thing. Hmm, let me see how we want to do this because the track ends there. Got a track here, track here, and track here. Well, one thing we could do is actually, if we rotate this this way, then we could actually connect this on the other end, which may be what we have to do. Feels weird putting this just all the way on the side and in the front here, but you know, let's just try to line that up and get this straight. Because then we can take this and that connects, and then we can have it feed out straight here. So there isn't really a connection point because this is just kind of a block that sits here, but what we can do is if we remove this block, kind of just put it to the side, and we can just pretend there are rails going there, then we can take this piece, which is kind of a similar biome. You've got like the this type of biome, have that connect there, and see if we can connect that up to our main mine here. So, oh wow, there goes that tree. So these are not even, so going over here just caused it to fall off here. So let me just see where that connects up. Okay, so we can actually connect this up right here. Let's move that in. And more or less that's connected. For the purposes of imagination, I mean, that pretty much works. That actually works out pretty well. Okay, so we've got that. Let me not lose that block piece. We'll put a cart on the track there. And let's continue to connect the tracks because I think the tracks will define how everything fits together. So the, the only thing that we have is actually going to be this one right here. Do we want to go straight into the nether? I guess, I guess we have to. So we can put a lot of the overworld stuff there, have this go straight into the nether. So what we are going to do is, now that this spits out that way, hmm. So we're gonna want to maybe do a, like a modification. If there's a way that we can get this to have a curved piece, I may, let me actually steal. I'm gonna go ahead and steal a curved piece because this whole thing is supposed to be modular. So the goal of this railroad track is that each railroad piece is completely modular. So what we're gonna do is we are going to steal this curved piece here and insert it right here. So putting it right at the back, remove that and connect that up here. Okay, so this is now sort of connected and now we just have this. Obviously we removed one particular track of it, but that's not a big deal because all we need to do is take that, have this continue on here and you know, it can, it can cha we, let's change around the configuration of this. So we do need this going upwards, but let's see if we can play around with the track here. I wish I got more copies of this set because this is really useful for building your own rail systems and stuff, but we could do that. And then we can have, uh, let's see, we could have this part going up. So I'm gonna take this brick, put it here. So we have our track connecting here. And then we could just make this really compact have that going outwards like this. And then let's say it ends just somewhere around here. So that's a great place to end things. I am going to place this one lava pit here to kind of keep things congruent. Yeah, that's looking good. And that's all our railroad track connected. That is that is all done. So our track starts here, ends here, and now we just kind of fill in the gaps because this is really, that's really the only constraint. And obviously we want the end parts connected, but. Otherwise, those are the constraints. We're gonna try to put some of the taller buildings here and then work our way over and try to group things by biomes as well. So this looks like a player built sculpture. It's kind of a taller tower. So what I'm gonna do is we'll move this over to the side and what's a good spot for this? Maybe we could just kind of slot this in right here. Yeah, I think that looks, that looks okay. 
and there are a lot of other player built buildings and village buildings and we want to have kind of a peaceful area here and then getting more dangerous as we move across. So I think we obviously need to start off with the villages. There have been a couple of village sets, but only one really big one. So what I'll do is, I mean, this desert outpost, that's more of a desert thing. Mushroom Island, Nether, 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 End Portal. So I don't need anything here right now. And that's like a water section. Here we've got ice stuff, ice stuff, ice stuff. This is like a village type thing. So we, let's get all of our villager type settings. Ah, uh, this is the abandoned village. So maybe this can be the threshold going into more dangerous areas. The barn feels like it definitely belongs in a village-like setting. So we'll get the, the big old red barn here. Let's see, what else do we have? Well, there's a mushroom house. I guess that could be seen as some sort of village-like thing here. So we can get this set up here. And maybe the mushroom thing will go with the other mushroom stuff. So we'll, we'll slide that over, but village stuff first. Any other village stuff? I mean, there's a little place to re uh, release an iron golem that's been locked up. So that's a pretty cool function that we have here. We have, let me see, uh, an iron golem actual transformation area. So this allows you to summon the iron golem itself. So we can take this and put that with the villages because obviously that makes sense to have with the villages itself and there's just some like other small markets this is more of a beachfront thing so we'll set that aside this is a village thing though and we'll put all the animal houses together in their own separate area as well I think. so we should be pretty good group together all the village stuff here oh there's another like little segment of a railroad track there although it doesn't lead anywhere is the thing i mean it leads out to open water so maybe well i mean there was like another connection point back here right like we can just have that yeah, we can just say, put this, okay, that works out. That works right there. So that's another kind of railroad track connection point. And let's start putting together our village. And I want our village to be on this side. So what we're gonna do is we still need to get the main big village section out. So let's do that right now. I'm gonna remove the dual arena because this is, I mean, I guess you can kind of see this as maybe being in the nether. So let's just set that aside for now. These are all parts of the Panda Haven. We have a little bit of an outpost here. This is kind of a jungle-like outpost, so I'll put this with the other jungle stuff because that's a big tree. Modern house and lots of villages back there. So there is a desert village and a regular village. One thing that could be cool is having a regular village on one side and a desert village on the other side. This is our other nether portal, so this is another really important one because to get out of the nether and back to the overworld, we're going to need this. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just put this somewhere over here facing that way. I don't know where it's going to be yet, but I'm marking that as being right there. Let's see. So we have another copy of the fortress, except that one's kind of more of a, I piece it together with my own bricks versus the actual official set. So that's kind of a more rudimentary copy of it. But I guess we can put them together if we have a space. This is, looks like a village thing to me. And maybe what we can do is actually put a lot of the animal type stuff together. I think that would be a a cool thing, because a lot of the villages maybe have like a special animal type setting. So we got the sheep, we got the chicken, the llama village, I mean, this is a village. Oh, whoops, that is not connected on there. The Minecraft sets are obviously intended to separate out and come apart, so that was not super well connected. Let's get it on the base, there we go. Big llama. And what are the other animals? We have the pig house. So we definitely want the pig house. And we have, of course, the other two village buildings there. This is the bunny style set. We'll get the modern house out here as well because this is a good set to have in general. So let's get the modern house here. And we are maybe quickly running out of room. This, this could be a problem because I am thinking that this is already looking like a lot and we haven't even gotten to the the main brunt of things. But you know what? We'll take it as it comes and see what happens. Maybe there'll have to be a secondary part to this. So let's take the village house buildings out. These are all different village buildings themselves. We have these right here. And one more right up right here. Okay, how are we gonna do this? So right now it's a big clutter. Let's put the llama 
uh, the llama village on the back of the mountain cave because obviously this one is a pretty big one. We also have got like the, the bee house and the associated bee farms. So we do want to bring those over. A lot of other animal stuff as well. So I'm missing some stuff down there. This looks like a more fortified area, but I mean, it could be part of a village. I'm still trying to figure out what exactly I want to do with the fortified stuff. I think it'd be cool to have the fortifications on the other side of the nether portal because then it's like leading up to the final battle you're stocking up versus this is the more pe peaceful area. So I'll start putting the fortifications here and we can have icy stuff in one biome as well. This is in the end. This is a fortress, so fortification. This is kind of a swamp area. I don't know where I'm putting the swamp stuff yet. So we'll just set the fortification stuff aside for now and focus in on the villages and buildings. So there's a fox lodge, but this is like an icy fox lodge. So maybe this is a transition from villages to snow. That could be a good way of doing it. Uh, let's see. We have some more village-like stuff here. Another bee farming area, and we definitely want to have the bees together, so what we'll do is we will put this with the other bee thing over there. What else? What else? Okay, so this is clearly a farming area. That's a peaceful farming thing. Ice, ice. We'll get the ice stuff later. Jungle temple. That's underwater, so I don't know where we're going to put the underwater stuff. And that is the nether. That's a big nether platform, so we will get to that in a second. What else do we have here? We have Desert Outpost, Mushroom, that's right, Desert Outpost, Mushroom, Nether, and End. So nothing, nothing really needed here. Okay, let's, let's get into things. So these are village stuff. I think this is like a village thing. This is a pretty peaceful type of setup here. So I just want to get these on the table first. And then we have the first house. I guess it makes sense to start with the, the first house. I think that's a village-y like thing. We have a farm, so we want the farm, we want the modern house, although maybe the modern house isn't something you get to until near the end, because you need to be pretty good at the game to build something like this first. So we'll put this near the end. This will be near the beginning. Panda house, don't forget that. So we have the panda house here. Wow, this could be taken up by just the villages. Oh my goodness. Well, we'll make things more compact. We'll figure out how things slot in. Um, panda area, so that's like a panda head area. That's jungle. Cave, cave, cave. So we'll, we'll do caves later. Guess this is a stable. So yeah, it's horse stables. That's the village type thing. Oh, there's a lot of just loose pieces in these. I think that makes sense because there's just a lot of loose items that are thrown around here. But yeah, okay. Um... What else? What else? What else? Treehouse. This is a village type thing. That's part of a fortification. Yeah, I think we're good because all these are caves. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. With all the village stuff finally on the table, what we're going to do next is take the llama village right here. And we're just going to place this as basically the other largest item. We're going to place it right here. And I think this is a pretty good slot for it. It's about as tall as the mountain cave, so it's a pretty big structure. So we have that. Again, we've been trying one to group the taller sculptures over here and then maybe some tall stuff at the back as well. So the farm fits in right nicely next to it. What we're gonna do is gonna do a slew of other village buildings. What fits in these slots? So Minecraft is all about like slotting things together and figuring out what fits in specific slots. So. We've got this here. I mean, this is pretty good. We have some wasted space, to be honest, so maybe we're gonna have to change that. Hmm. Yeah, this, uh, well, okay, no, this, this works. Let's see. I've got one village house here, and then the farm should lead to the stables, I think. I think that makes a lot of sense. So you have the road leading to the stables here. We've got another little marketplace area for uh, selling stuff. But this is a pretty small thing. So let's set the small things aside because they're going to be needed to fill holes and stuff. Little place for Iron Golem to be kept. And then we can get on to like the bigger village stuff. And this, yeah, let's, let's rotate that here. I think this makes more sense for the grass to continue. And then we have some of the other bigger village stuff here. So that is a main village building. And let's start moving them over. Ah, oh, that slots in very nicely. Okay. 
And the key is to keep everything on a grid. If we can keep everything on a grid-based system type setup, that is the goal. So if we can get like another house here, yeah, that's that's good, that works. Iron Golem spawning area, is that gonna fit? Mm, not real, uh, maybe if we rotate it. No, I don't think so. We'll, we'll have to put something else there. Um, well, this is a village house, that could go there. Yeah, that's nice. Although this maybe should be a transition to the sand area, but we could do the sand area after this. I think this is fine. We've got a little bit of a stall for selling stuff at the village. Again, all peaceful buildings right now. This is a pretty densely packed pop <laughs> population area here, but you know, I guess that makes sense. I am going to go ahead and remove this because that is sticking out and not letting us put other stuff in there. So we're gonna temporarily remove that brick. Um, want an open farming area for sure. So, uh, this is just a square though. So we'll, we'll set this aside. Uh, let me see. Want to start near the first house. So let's get the first house kind of near the beginning area here. Although I don't think, I mean, most people's first houses are like a piece of dirt. This is not someone's first house. This is someone's like 10th house, but I don't know. I mean, that's, that's what the set was called. We have... Mm. Oh, that fits in nicely. The sheep and the pig. And we have this whole chicken area. So let's try to put the animals together. I think having the animal-like sculptures together will look good. I have some water connecting from one to the other, so that's the goal. Um, let's put in some other water stuff. Mm, maybe here, because this... Yeah, this bridges the gap. This is kind of an awkward shape, though. Maybe we'll, we'll set that aside first. This is nice, because this... Is a water piece that you can kind of bend around the curve there so that works panda house is kind of just a standalone by itself and it can do seated as well and you just rotate the furniture a certain way so that is probably how we're going to do this thankfully this can be put pretty much anywhere i'd like to put it here but we don't want to stack things either is a thing but maybe for the panda house it can be an exception because maybe that one can be like on top of this house. I'm, I'm preemptively doing this because I feel like we're gonna run out of space very quickly. So maybe if we just put the panda house there, that's kind of like a landmark. Yeah, I think that works. I'm fine with that. Same with the bee house. I think the bee house can park right there. And then we have a lot of beekeeping stuff around here, but we can, we can get to that in a second. We have the rabbit house, which is going to sit right there. And I'm going to put in these little tiny bits and pieces of villages. There's a big empty square there. I mean, not that big, but enough for maybe a B section. Yeah, I think this could, this could work. Or maybe a smaller section where we've got this kind of little bell for one of the villages. I think this is quite nice. So we're going to put that right there. Ah, oh, yeah, that, that, that perfectly fills the space. Okay, great. So B stuff here. I know there's another B section. There it is. Okay, so another B section is here. Maybe, okay, so there's a lot of water here, so we can try to put the water here, maybe spilling out. Yep, that works. Some farming areas here. Where is the first farm set? I know the first farm set is around here somewhere. Um, it may be, oh, we've got like some pretty, pretty nice and calm areas here. I don't know why there's lava. I mean, there's lava everywhere. Um, that is for the fortifications, which we want to set aside. It may be time to start, uh, it's another castle. We'll get this out and we'll get like this out because these are like little space fillers. This is another village type thing. Oh, we set a lot of the farm stuff here. Okay, we want to get these over to the other side because cave stuff can go there. So what I will do is I will put this right here come on uh perfect fit so we'll put some of the smaller blocks just to fill the spaces there um taiga adventures can go here this is kind of an open farm area so we can just stick that right there yeah it works that's pretty good and let me just start to move over well the modern house or this is like the waterfall mansion i i think this should go for the more fancy stuff when we get to the later in the game so i think that makes sense to leave move over there we'll put this village section there oh that fits this fits in well right here wow it's all it's all coming together we have another village area so let's kind of connect that up there and we can connect these in with the plates and it's a panda area so panda's right there we can uh, have this Ooh, can we slot this in 
If we lift this up here, yeah. Okay, that's good, because that looks like it's part of that building there. That's great. Okay, so what we're gonna do is take our other farm and village stuff here. So we have farm village stuff here, 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 and here, and here. Oh, this is gonna be a little tricky, but ooh, ooh, ooh. okay, okay. We're getting it. Oh, that's another farm. Why is the farm area all the way over there? I didn't mean to do that. Um, maybe I did. Maybe there's a reason that I didn't forgot. But we are going to set these down here. This is a lot of farmland. So we can put all the farm stuff together because I think that would make sense to have in a Minecraft world a ton of farm stuff. And we also, one thing we have is a sky house, but we can save the sky house for the later bits and pieces that's a tree house there. I'm just gonna take all these out so I don't forget about them. I feel like I don't wanna be at the end of the video and realize I just like forgot this. So I'm gonna go ahead, take this out. This is the jungle tree house. So we'll get to the jungle later on. Um, that's, that's for later. We do have these, we have these, and we have ice, 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 jungle, ice, underwater, nether. Okay, we're not missing anything. And these are mushroom stuff. So mushroom, what we'll do is we'll have the water lead to mushroom stuff. Okay, so farm here. What is the best way to set this up? Well, we can put this right here. This this fits in a grid quite nicely. This is a lot of sand. So, I mean, is this part of the village? Like it is a village road. We don't want the road leading into the water either. So maybe we want the road. Hmm. We can have the road leading out. So this is kind of your way to go out of the villages. Yeah, I think that works. A small area to practice with uh, dummies there, so that makes sense to put there. This is a swampy type thing. More farmland. So we have farms going here. Farm go. I mean, this farm could just balance. Uh, let's just. I'm going to go ahead and remove this there. Put this here. Then. These are now connected, so that's not going to fall off. Fantastic. We have one last big farm section. So can we get these to line up here? Oh, that's okay. So if we just move the way that these blocks are set up, we can actually get these attached, I think. So let me try to get this actually attached there. There you go. Okay, so these are actually fully attached by studs, which is fantastic. Now I think it's time. There's a lot of water here, so it's perfect. So we can move on to the water stuff. So what, what I'm going to do is, again, that's the nether starting here. And this is our transition from animal to ice stuff. Hmm. Maybe we'll have the ice stuff go here, and then the ice can melt into the water. I think having the ice melt into the water here could be a good way of doing things. So what we'll do is we'll get the uh, frozen spikes over here. Again, this is a lot of water there too. So it's like water leading into ice and then we can have a lot of ice stuff over on this side of things. And the mushrooms as well. So we have another kind of frozen spikes area here. Thank you very much. And let's just get this kind of attached on this end, I think. Uh, let's see, I mean, I've got like a plate of wasted space. That's not that big of a deal. So let me just get, um, we want for the water stuff, the shipwreck, so. I'm going to get the shipwreck here, and mushroom thing, this is a desert, this is like, I don't know, this is maybe a farm thing, this is, this can go anywhere, we'll, we'll set that aside, that's like a filler block, and we have a mushroom piece here, this is a water piece, and a lot of ice stuff, which we'll get in a second, so we will bring over the water stuff, put them on this side first, okay, and then we have Again, we want our mines to go on that side, so we're not paying attention to the mines right now. That's an underwater temple. Um, I don't know where we're exactly going to put that, but that definitely goes with this. Yeah, we'll put it with the other water stuff. We can say a player like excavated it and brought it out of the water, so that can go somewhere here. So we'll, we'll put that somewhere there. We do want the ice stuff there first, so the two different ice igloos we are going to take from two different years of Minecraft. It's cool how they did different igloos over the theme's run. So, number one, 
number two, and there's an ice fortress as well. So that could be a cool thing to start going into our fortifications on this side. So be nice to have the body of water. Okay, so water's here. It'd be nice to have like the water connect is my thing. Hmm. Maybe what we could do, let me let me think. There's definitely a way to move this around because that's obviously, this is actually sitting over water. So all the water, I mean, this is pretty perfect already. Hmm. Let me see what it looks like if we did. But this is like our transition into ice. You know, I do think this is good. We can connect this here and have the water be connected there. We can have our other igloo right next to it because I think it makes sense to have the igloos just right up next to each other. And finally, the last ice spike related thing. This was our 2023 set right here. Ah, that's perfect. Okay, that works great. And then we can move on to the water stuff here. Although, mm, so ne nether's there. We don't want to mess with the nether too much because there's a lot of nether stuff that we're going to have to put in. But we can put nether going straight this way versus water stuff we can continue to move on that way. So there is one more ice thing as well. There's a big ice fortress. So take the ice fortress here. This one just came out last year, I believe, in 2022 and put this with the other ice stuff. So again, we're gonna start needing to move these over to the side here. And that's the end of our nether portal. This is all water stuff. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. And that was the mushroom. Okay, so well, this this obviously goes here. That's, oh, that, that looks perfect. Cause that's a whole snowy area. Let's start by putting the other mushroom stuff here, tentatively. Just pretend there's like a magical barrier here where the nether doesn't cross. I mean, we're gonna have to tightly pack this in. There's no other way to do it. So mushroom, mushroom, that looks good to me. I like how that looks. Um, and then just some more water stuff. So I mean, like that's, that's leading into the swamp. So we can have our swamp connection there. And then we can have this leading towards like the more beachy area. So what we're going to do is bring over some of our water stuff here. Uh, what is the best place to organize this? Let me see. Maybe, yeah, that, that works here. So we have the shipwreck here, like so. Let's get our two remaining water-related things and just put them, I mean, just probably over here makes sense. So, like, it's not a real better way to do this, I guess. It'd be nice if this was able to, oh, does that, oh, that just slides, slides right in. That's perfect. Okay. And I'm actually going to go ahead and put this one over here. So, that works out pretty perfectly. That just slid right in. And then we can start putting the swamp stuff in. So we have the witch hut. I know there's a lot of other swampy things. Well, there's a tree house. Yeah, there's like two different tree house type stuff. And we said our lead into the swamp was right there. So this, okay, that slots in quite nicely. So this can be like the rest of the swampy area. Hmm. We are running out of room. I mean, we, we've gotten a lot of them and we still have that whole space for the caves. Hmm, okay. We may have to be a little bit more space efficient right now because there's a lot of stuff we need to put out. Okay, let me just take out like these little random plates. Like these are all just like little random bits and pieces of like stuff that we can use, but don't necessarily need. So like turtle skeletons, I mean, I definitely want to include all the sets. So like that's a nether type build there. We've got a couple of iron golems. So we'll put those around the villages. That's all good. Oh, I forgot about these. Still have these. Hmm. Well, that's all nether. That's desert. Swamp. Swamp and jungle. This is the jungle. So let's transition from the swamp to the jungle. And can we place this in here? I have to move the tree, get this in the grid. Yeah, I think this is a good, good placement overall. There's some like empty gaps, but I mean, this is pretty, pretty tight. Let me get the jungle tree house and we're gonna put that right around here as well because it makes sense to put all the jungle stuff together so okay I, well that works but we have a lot of space on the side that i feel like we're not taking advantage of so what i'll do is i'll put that there let it hang off the side a little bit 
And then we have this uh, skeleton defense set, which clearly is also set in the jungle because of the large tree here. So we're gonna take this and we'll just put all the skeletons and skeleton horses. That's cool. Like here. This doesn't seem space efficient. Maybe, maybe the key is this goes here. Ooh, I like that. And then, and then this can go, this can attach underneath. But this is flush against the ground. Hmm. Let me think, what is the way we're gonna, I mean, we could do this and then just put something on the back, but that doesn't feel space efficient to me. Cause then we're taking up a lot, no, this is, this is what we wanna do. Yeah, I think this works. This is pretty good. I mean, I still feel like there's some space wasted, but maybe we'll, we'll revisit it if we need to. It seems okay for now. So all the ice stuff is on a grid here and it is now time, I think, to start putting in the cave stuff on the other side. So. Just put in some other, cause there's a, like a lot of extra space here. So this doesn't tessellate in, um, hmm. What we could do, I mean, this is, this is clearly one block. So I'm gonna just put this panda section right here. Oh, that might, that might fall off. Hmm. Otherwise it'd fit great, but it, it could fall off. We, we'll hold it in with the B. There we go, that, that's held in. Okay. So next we'll do the cave stuff on that side. So what we will do is I'm gonna take some of the tallest mining like cave type structures first and put them over here because I think it makes the most sense to squeeze them in. Oh, if this fits, that would be fantastic. Yeah, come on, come on. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, that, that works out great. That's fantastic. We got another bedrocky type multi-level cave system right here. And then a lot of little cave systems. There's a lot of like small cave systems around here. So what we will do is put this right here. And this seems to work. I mean, maybe there's a few ways we could optimize it, but I mean, there's this is pretty good. Let me see what else do we have. We've got the other fortress, which we don't need to put in the other fortress if we don't have the room. That is the thing. I will not force myself to put the other fortress in. But let me just try to put some of these in right here. Let's see, how do we wanna, let's, I mean, can we risk it here? Yeah, I think, I think we can. I think that's fine. Okay, so of course in the caves, we will have our big boss battle with the warden, which is this right here. So I think this can be kind of an underground area and I will put the warden tower type collapsible structure right here in the center. So that will be a good, good place to put that. So let me just get this set up here. Maybe I have to orient it this way. There's a mushroom in the way. That's kind of annoying. Okay. These, these I mean, this is made to collapse. So these just kind of like stand here. And it is not a very sturdy structure, but you know, for our purposes, that's gonna do fine. Okay, warden boss battle there. And what we're gonna do now is we need to expand the nether this way because we need our portal going back out here. And I think the portal going out can lead into the fortress. Um, so what we shall do is, have we gotten all the cave stuff? Oh yeah, we pretty much have. Okay, fantastic. Ooh, forgot the jungle or the, the desert stuff. Not a lot of desert stuff though. So what we will do is kind of put the desert stuff, maybe on our lead out from the nether, we can get into the desert because we gotta take up the nether space here. Okay, save the desert for later and let me get the nether stuff because there are, it's actually a lot, ooh, there's a lot of nether stuff. Hmm. Okay. So let me get, the individual nether pieces here. There's like a nether boat as well, so that's interesting. All these are nether, so let's see. We've got here, 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 and here. With our wither skeleton there. That's a cool looking minifigure. Regular skeleton with fire as well. But I don't know, We're set the regular skeleton aside for now, I guess. Uh, let me see, what else do we have? 
Um, these are supposed to be attached on here somehow. I don't see where the bar is, though. Oh, here it is. Okay, there we go. There is the bar. Okay, so what we're going to do is take this stuff here. And then a couple more nether items even beyond this. So that's, um, oh boy, we may not have room. Well, I'll put that down first. We want to get the larger stuff in here. It's another nether item. Oh my goodness, there are so many nether related things. Oops, that fell down there. These trees are meant to collapse like they're built to topple over like you're chopping wood. So things are just going to be falling willy nilly all around here. It's the end portal. We don't need that yet. This is a bit of another desert, other fortress, uh, sky stuff that we want at the end. And okay, okay, we're actually almost there. We are, once the nether's in, I think we'll be at a much better spot than we were previously. So what I'm going to do now is we are going to try to fit the nether stuff in. So let me see. Set this down here for now. I want to get the biggest nether bridge in because this is the big one. Can we fit it in? Oh, what is, what is stopping us? Oh, the treasure chest handle is stopping us? Oh my goodness. Tessellate, come on, there we go. So that's in there. We have a few spaces for like small nether items. Because there's a lot of empty room in the center there. Hmm. Can, is this, is this something that can separate out? Okay. I feel a little bit better about that. I mean, this, this clearly comes off. So what we will do is just reattach that here. Put this section of the nether there. I think that that works nicely as a divider area. So we can stick that there. Put some nether trees on the back here. That works out well. We have a bit of a lava falls area and we are going to keep on connecting these up. So this bridge here should just, I mean, I think this should just connect. That, that makes the most sense to me. Having the bridges keep going, put some nether stuff on the side here. And a large lava pool. And there, where's the wither? The wither boss battle area was also, that, that might be part of it. Um, so let me just get these other bits of the nether in here. That's a perfect square for that square. That worked out great. And then we have this right here. This is kind of our last nether piece. So, I mean, all these are just kind of thrown here for now. So what I'll do is I'll move these, move these to the side for now. Fortress. And get this in right here. That works. And then there. Okay, so that is the exit to the nether. The exit is out here. And the exit can lead us straight to the fortress, I think. So the fortress can be just waiting for you right when you exit. Maybe this is something a player created so that when you exit the nether, you can just go right to your fortress. The sword outpost just goes really well with that. And the same for this kind of fortressy area. So maybe this is where we're building fortifications and nice houses because we are, we are pretty late game at this point. So we're late game. We have the resources, the materials to build these fancy houses and big fortresses, and that's what we are doing. So let's get that. I wanna get the sky house here as well. That's a big, big set as well. So sky tower, the ninja uh, the ninja fortress, and the one desert thing. So that's gonna work out nicely. So we can actually put the sky house right here, have the different blocks like up in the sky there. So that works great. Do we forget any nether items? No. I don't think so. Oh, there's like one nether dual area. No, we'll get to that. Okay. We can take our last fortress build here, the, the ninja temple, which is a nice one to see. So let's place that in right there. Oh, the nether dual can go right here. So that is perfect. So let's, let's do it. Okay, so we have our last nether piece here, and I think this can fit. Oh, whoops, that just fell right down there. Hopefully we can get this to fit somewhere in here where it just actually fits in the space. Oh, can we squeeze things in? I don't want to push things on that side, but we may have to do some stacking for this. I don't know. So I'll, I'll put this down first because there, there's just a lot of like foliage here. I mean, we'll get this foliage piece out of the way. And I think that if we can get this to attach onto here, like this, this works totally fine. I think that looks okay to me. 
put the skull there. So that's kind of our exit to the nether. And yeah, I think that looks totally okay. Cause then we have the portal here and we go on out. Last nether block. I don't know where we can put this just like here is fine. Okay. And I don't know why there's an orange block in there. There we go. That is perfect. Okay. So now it is time to actually go ahead and we're getting tight in space here because we need to still get to the end. And we've got like one end piece here and we have, what else do we have? We have the desert fortress. So this is like a castle type setup that we definitely need to have here. Okay, so now we have our last bit right here, which is going to be the, the desert outpost, which I mean, I guess that can fit hopefully right here. Oh man, it's, if we push this out a little bit, ah, oh, yep, yep. I mean, this is kind of in there. What is it catching on? Oh, it's, ah, there we go. Okay, so there's this one light plate there. Let's just get that out of the way or one two by four brick, or we'll remove that so we can push this all the way in. Yeah, that that's more like it. Okay, great. So that's all in here. Put that in there to close the gap. And we still have, there's still some wasted space, but I know there are like a lot of random stuff, so we can get the random things. I do think it is now time. Well, we got this last like little bit of, of a area for the fortification stuff and then some random plates. So we'll get the random plates at last. I'll find places for those little stuff. Uh, and then lastly, we just have the end portal and the actual end stuff. So let's get that in here. So taking the end portal, let me go ahead, put that in here. So let me think. So this can go, this can just go here. I mean, I think that's fine. And then once we're fully equipped with all our fortresses, we can lead ourselves going directly into the end portal. And honestly, we're kind of out of space at this point. I mean, maybe we can fit in some of the end stuff like here, but I mean, I think this just needs to go somewhere else. This might not be that crucial if this is just a plate. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just put this on the side for now and then we'll get our, is it better to have this, oops, this brick fell off. Uh, is it better to have this opened up or closed up because this, can get pretty compact like that. I, I think this is mm, this is probably the best configuration. I think that works out the best because now we can actually have some of our end stuff here. That's the end thing right there. Then, I mean, there's no, actually the end places are actually very small. There's only like two platforms for the end dragon. So we may be able to make this all fit because if this one's just kind of on the back there, nonchalantly on the back, we can put this one right here connect that up here so this is your portal to the end maybe we can get this like here. yeah that works and then we still have some space so what if we actually close this up hmm then we have a good amount of space there we don't want to move that and that lastly i mean this is really just the last big thing we have to put in hmm hmm <laughs> hmm there's definitely a way to get this in there, like, more efficiently than I have. I mean, this could go here. This could go here. How happy are we pushing everything there off to the side? Oh, 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 yep. Okay. Oh my goodness, have we done it? I think, I think we have done most of it. I mean, we can get this actually pushed back in a little bit more. Don't need to be all the way at the edge there. So that's nice. Get these lined up in our grid. Sure, we have another copy of the castle that I didn't really use. But again, we don't really need two copies of it. We just need one. So what we will do is take just these last little bits of stuff. I mean, technically, this is from Minecraft Dungeons, but Got like trees. I mean, these must have just fallen off of the other models. So trees, we've got some uh, villain stuff to fight, the abominations and whatnot. Some random mobs, a ton of Steve and Alex's here and some villains as well. And just a lot of like little plates. So I'm just gonna go around and try to fit these plates into sections and see where they can go. So let me see, we have this one right here. Um, can we fit this into here? Cause this is like a lot of water here. So, um, oh, there's a good spot there. We'll put this here. I'm gonna go ahead and put this, oh, that's perfect. 
This can go right here, kind of bridges the gap between these two areas, so that is wonderful. This is an underwater area, so I do want to put this by the underwater stuff. Oh, there's one spot right there. Perfect. There we go. Then we've got a TNT cannon launcher. I mean, maybe you just want to have that in the end to launch at the dragon. So I've got that there. Just like a random block here. I'll put that there. Farming area. This is a good spot for farming, I think, by the, the water here. And have we done... I mean... Now I'm getting like, now I'm getting tempted to see if we can fit in the second copy of the thing that I have here. Did we get them all? Yeah, this drawer is empty. Okay, well that's all of them. I mean, that's just the second copy of the fortress, so I'm actually going to leave it as is because the fortress is pretty flimsy on its own, so we'll leave that there. And I think the final touch will be just to put on our trees and then scatter some of the mobs around and then we can walk through what it looks like to go from point A to point B of this entire Lego Minecraft display. So let's just put some of the trees here. This is a jungle tree, so I think this goes with the, the swamp type of thing there. We'll have the end dragon hovering above here. Maybe the end dragon has a buddy. Like maybe maybe we're gonna go outside the realm of canon here and say that there are, whoops, fired a bolt there. I don't know where that went. Oh, there it is. But there are now two end dragons. Maybe it's like a, a little baby end dragon as well. I mean, there is an egg, so this is kind of a, another one where you can just uh, see him flying around as well. So uh, that will be a bit of an extra challenge for the player there. But, you know, we've got two of them right there because Lego has made two. And then let's see. We have these creatures from Minecraft Dungeons, which I have not played, so I don't really know exactly how they work, but I feel like that's a kind of like boss fight type thing you want to be fighting right before you reach the end, so we'll have them doing some attacking here. This is a jungle abomination, so I'll put them in these swampy jungle areas. And then we have some redstone abominations just running around in these areas where they're causing trouble and need to be attacked, so I am going to put that down right there. We've got some underwater opponents so i think we'll just put put our big boy right at the top here that that makes a lot of sense to me and then put one of the smaller ones just just right there and with that i think i think we have done it i mean there's some extra mobs we can always add on if we need to I and mean, we'll have some iron golems patrolling the village of course we want to have a couple of those just going around but yeah this is this is every single LEGO Minecraft set ever released. So LEGO Minecraft, we initially got a couple of like micro world sets, which I do own, but I don't really count them as along these sets because they're not minifigure scale. So I didn't include them here. The actual minifigure scale Minecraft stuff started in 2014. We got our first micro world stuff in like 2012, 2013, but 2014, we got our first minifigure scale Minecraft stuff. And the theme has been going strong from 2014 all the way up to now, 2023, where all of even the newest January 2023 sets are factored into this display. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a player character. Let's just take standard Steve character right here. We've got our guy and we're going to see what is going to be our journey going through this entire world, starting at the mountain cave and going all the way down to the end. Or maybe where we should start actually is the first house. So what I think we'll do is we'll do a little bit of a zigzag. So we'll go through the villages first. So the village areas here, not going into the icy territory, but just mostly staying in the villages. Then we'll go over, do some mining so we can walk through the villages into the mountain cave area, which is here. And then go through the mine cut shafts, do our mining, and eventually the track will lead us to the nether portal. So we'll take the portal right directly through to the nether, do our exploring in the nether, and then come out of the nether here explore around here, go in the icy area, defeat some of the mini bosses there, and finally, when we feel ready, we'll go over to the end. So let's do it. So let's start off actually right here at the house. So let's imagine just kind of going through the journey of just one character. You go ahead, you exit your house here, and uh, maybe this is a more peaceful area, so you can do some farming. If you just wanna get food, you just go around farm, avoid the enemies, and you can see there's a stable area here and a full-on barn, so if you wanna maybe house some of your animals there, the barn is a great place to do so. 
And let's say throughout the course of this, you've become really fond of animals. So maybe you start to build more and more animal sculptures. This whole panda house here can be opened up and maybe that's your next home because you can actually live inside of this entire structure here. So let's say you're just kind of camping out in here. You go to sleep for a little bit, go out ready for your next day. So that is the panda house let's try not to let that fall over and then we can have okay we want to build some more big monuments to animals so we have the pig house here and even one like giant pig on top of it as well so maybe that's just another thing that you have built for this giant pig but you go up to the house you live in there for a little bit and you move on to the sheep so you've got a sheep a wool shaving factory so this is kind of where you get dyed wool you've got a chicken area right here so you can farm some eggs on the chicken platform here. So that's a nice one to get. Even a flag that says the chicken face on it. And maybe you encounter a village. So you go through the village here. This is a very tightly compact village. And you realize that you really like honey and bees. So you make a big monument to the bees there. This is a house in and of itself. So that is a house that you can go inside. And then you do some trading with the local villagers, of course. You get to the rabbit area here. So there's another animal themed thing here with the bunny rabbits. That's like a bunny farm. Maybe you do some more bee farming. So just so make sure you don't get the bees angry at you where there's kind of hovering in a cloud of angry bees flying around. But that's how that one works right there. You have some more stuff in the village. You encounter maybe some other players fighting some enemies. But we're not about that. We're just about the farming life right here. The farming and peaceful life. And speaking of farming, here's where we do it. So we have our characters just going along, doing the farming. We have nice flags that are labeled directly for different types of plants. So that whole area there is kind of one particular farm. So we can have uh, all of our farming done here with kind of our farmhouse. And this is just a lot of farming. I mean, uh, simple farming, um, very, very simple lifestyle here. And let's just go on over and try to go over and progress to one of the largest settlements. So the large settlement here is the Llama Village. So this is the largest one. Maybe you weren't the one who built this. Somebody else made this who really likes llamas. And this is one of the biggest villages. And now it's time after exiting the village to go on and exit directly to the Mountain Cave. Because this is where your adventure really will begin after you're, you're well fed. You like the village life, but maybe, maybe you're trying to do something more, you know? So... What we're going to do is we're going to equip a silver helmet. So now we have got some armor on us and go on ahead. So what we'll do is we can actually take the elevator up and down. So if you look on the back here, there's actually a full on track down at the bottom there where we can do some exploring so we can exit out there. But the easy way to do this is also just to go on and take the elevator up here. So we will emerge at the top and be ready for our adventure. So now we're at the top, we can take the minecart down. So this just goes right down there and we will get the treasure cart out of the way. Maybe somebody else has stocked some treasure in that cart, but there we have it. We go in here, go on on the inside and then exit. This track is continuous, leading us directly to the creeper mine. So as you can see, this is a whole continuous track just leading on the inside and we find our way blocked. So. Now we have to use some TNT. Let's go ahead and place a TNT there and blow up the path to let us continue. That was a pretty anticlimactic explosion. Let's try that again. We blow up the path. There we go. That's a big explosion. We can continue on our merry way. So now we will get this another chest minecart out of the way. We can have him continue on the cart here. So we are going all the way out and then we make our way to this area right here. So this is kind of just a little bit more of the villages. So our cart is going on through here and eventually we make our way out to the mine. So now it's time to do a lot of mining. This is the main mine. So we can take our mine carts and go on through here, which leads directly out to another portal. But we don't want to go there yet because um, that's a little dangerous right now. So what we'll do is we're gonna try to build up our stamina a little bit, kind of get some supplies. So we're gonna exit the minecart there and do some more mining in this area. So we have some bedrock adventures here. We go all the way down to the bottom to get some diamonds and bedrock. We have some more adventures here. And then we can go on over to some of these other mine areas where some of the newer updates are here. You have a skeleton spawner here. So that is quite, a, quite some trouble because this whole wall will rotate and reveal some skeletons. So that is a whole ordeal fight off the skeletons, go through some of the early rudimentary caves, and eventually delve all the way down into the deep dark. And that is where we will find the warden as our boss fight. So I don't have the warden here because he is actually on my wall of all the Minecraft figures, but 
after defeating the Warden, you feel pretty happy and secure with yourself. You're pretty OP at this point. So I think it's now time to go on over to the Nether. So what's great here is that you can take your minecart and pass right through the portal. So the portal just opens up. And there you go, you emerge on the other side and you're in the nether, whole new territory. It's a whole new kind of land here. You go up, take your rails, go down, and you kind of end your journey right here. So this is the end of where your minecart will take you. That is basically it. So then you can exit the cart, do some exploring around the nether, take a look at the new nether biomes, and eventually make your way to a nether fortress where you're going to have to fend off those blazes there. So do some battle with the blazes and just fight your way through these fortresses. So you have this all laid out in this grid here where all the bridges connect to each other. You can fight the blaze who's kind of hovering around and protecting this area, launching blazes, fires at you. So that's a really cool function here where you're doing some battle there of course avoid the wither skeleton maybe you fight the wither itself in the nether although i don't know why you would fight it in the nether and not like somewhere safer moving on from that though you know what you're, you're pretty you're pretty fueled up you even had some battles in this kind of battle arena in the nether i think it's time to go home so you fight back that last wither skeleton and it's now time to take the portal home you can stand right here push this lever and the portal will go on right down so that will allow you to just go right through the portal and right behind you that just closes right up again Zoop. there you go and that is how that works so that is fully all closed up now your your portal is activated whoops i keep on accidentally pushing this lever here but that is all the way up and now it's time to really do some fortification and you have the fortress so this is a fortress that maybe you have built. Maybe you've gotten some gold armor in the nether. I know that gold armor is pretty useless. You should have gotten netherite, but I mean, you've got some gold armor here and you even have some nice pressure plates to open the doors. So you can press down here and your doors will open for you. So you can go on through your fortress, close it behind you so the skeletons don't get in, tend to your horses, stock up on swords. Like there's a diamond sword in there. So maybe you want to be using that, not the golden one. But once you're all through the fortress, you can do some training over at the ninja temple here. This a whole ninja training area right there do some ninja fighting in this area and then go on over to stock up on your other defenses so you have a sword outpost here this is kind of a monument to how far you've come as a fighter and a warrior so you've got your sword outpost here you have some more kind of fortifications and maybe even try to build some stuff in the skies and you're of course if you don't sleep well then you're going to be attacked by these phantom like creatures here but of course once you are able to fight those back get some phantom memory maybe you can go on over to maybe some relaxing areas a bit you know now you've made it you can live in a house like this it's a modern tree house kind of sculpture and this is like you've got the glass you've got bookcases this is a nice place to live so you're, you're chilling out you're sitting on the sofa here you even have a modern waterfall house so if we go on over here you have a house built into the side of a waterfall which is going to look really nice so you're, you're living it up you know you're relaxing but eventually the time will come when you must venture into the end and have your final battle. But before that, I think it's time to explore some of the other biomes. So maybe you do some exploring in the desert, build a desert outpost here, and then delve deep underwater where you eventually are able to defeat the main guardians of the underwater undersea temple here and eventually emerge victorious. So once you emerge victorious from this temple, you want to raise it up out of the water, you transport it brick by brick or maybe remove the water around it so you have a whole ocean monument on your own and that's now part of your fortresses. That is that is something that you've made. You can go on to an abandoned pirate ship here, maybe find some hidden treasure and then you go on upwards and start scaling the mountains and go up to the frozen ice spikes and the tundra terrain. You maybe build a fortress to defend against enemies in this icy terrain here so this is a whole fortress you have the rug dyed purple so it's a really nice area you have a throne even so that's a really cool thing and you find some igloos along the way and maybe some villagers who will help you in the igloos moving on to here you have some more ice spike like areas so you've got the ice spike design here which is a really very formidable kind of desolate landscape but then you want to find something a little bit more familiar so you build a monument to the fox which is kind of your last animal monument here and this is a whole home for you as well as a fox lodge lastly there's some adventures on the mushroom islands i guess maybe this is a mario crossover so you've got a mushroom house and some of the other mushroom islands there encounter some mushroom but it is high time that we get to the end because you found yourself having explored everything in the overworld so 
Let's go on over to the jungle, because the jungle is where we maybe suspect our end portal is going to be. We find a jungle temple and go in and steal all the secrets inside, maybe erect some sort of fortification in the jungle as well. So this is a whole place that you can defend in the jungle, from a jungle treehouse to a jungle fortress right here. This is kind of your main home area. But once you're ready, it may now be time to fight some of the, maybe Minecraft dungeons have started leaking over. So you fight like the jungle abomination here, fight on top of a witch's hut, fight some of the redstone abominations. And just now, finally, it is time. You equip your diamond armor and your diamond sword, because I don't know why you're not using netherite, but maybe you feel that you don't need it. The netherite armor is just something you'll use for later. And you go all the way up and it's time to venture into the end. So you find an end portal underneath, kind of in this kind of snowy terrain type of thing. You jump through and you are transported directly to the end where your journey, well, ends. You fight maybe two ender dragons for some reason. Now there are two of them. Uh, so this is getting out of hand. Now there are two of them. So you fight them off. Maybe you do some battles there and you even encounter some other aspects of the end as well. Maybe you come over and find an end arena where somebody has erected some sort of an arena for you to do battle in. You uncover some of the new surprises that the end has to offer, like these shulker boxes here, which are new for 2023, depicting the latest end update, which I think was several years ago now, but the first time in Lego form, you farm some food from the end. And then when it's finally time, you jump back through the portal and make your way all the way back to where it started, back in your house, you have managed to defeat the Ender Dragons. And you find your way back at the very beginning to continue expanding your world even more. And that is the journey of a single LEGO Minecraft minifigure throughout this entire course. It was a lot of fun putting this together, and I really hope you enjoyed it as well. I definitely had so much fun trying to group together the different biomes from the villages to the mine areas to the icy stuff to the water to the nether. And of course, the few end sculptures we do have, the jungle and then more fortifications and stuff here. This was a blast to put together, and it was really cool being able to actually connect up all of the roller coaster assigned with the minecart pathways here. It is pretty rare that LEGO actually puts these out. I mean, obviously, there's only a few minecart sets out there, but I do like how you can combine all of them into one sort of cohesive track that I was able to stretch all the way through from the overworld to the nether, and I really appreciate how over this time, LEGO has made two different uh, nether portal sets. So you have the one portal going through the rail track, and you have the other portal on the other end just going back to the overworld, which I think is the best way to do it. That is the way that you want to set this up. So you have a portal in, you have a portal out, and then you have all of this area here. It just makes sense. And that is about summed up our LEGO Minecraft journey. We did put out another video like this a while back, but hopefully this has been much more updated. You have a much clearer journey. I'm not just on a tripod the whole time. You have a more dynamic camera going in and out of all the different places of this world. So I think the perfect way to end this video is just to kind of showcase some close-ups of different aspects of the world, maybe little scenes you may have missed while we were going through our journey here, and just end this by kind of doing a fly through the world itself and just enjoying all the things that LEGO Minecraft has to offer. Thank you all so much for tuning into Duck Bricks. I hope you enjoyed this video and definitely let me know down in the comments below. What do you think of LEGO Minecraft? I definitely think it's one of the most underrated LEGO Minecraft LEGO themes in general. I actually think LEGO Minecraft is so underrated because a lot of times LEGO designers can have the freedom to just build what they want. Sure, there are occasional sets where we get actual like mob generated stuff. So you've got like the um, underwater temple, of course, you've got like the, the jungle temple, but pretty much everything else, I mean, other than a few here and there, are just original ideas created by LEGO designers. It feels like an original LEGO action and adventure theme. And maybe I'm biased here because I have a lot of fond memories from playing Minecraft as a kid. I really enjoyed it. I had my own Minecraft server in high school. Even in college, we did a lot of Minecraft. So, you know, good memories from Minecraft in general. But overall, I definitely think that this is one of the most engaging LEGO themes. And I think my favorite thing about it is that, again, you can actually combine them all together. Like, they, are all, they all are on some sort of a blocky grid-like system, which again makes sense because it's Minecraft. So you can actually tessellate them all together and make something like this where no space is wasted and every single spot 
has a set in it. I think a good way to wrap up this video is by just doing one last fly through of the entire Minecraft world. This is every single Lego Minecraft set ever made combined into one massive diorama as of January 2023. Now obviously we're going to get keep on getting more new Minecraft sets every year and there's going to even be more releases this summer so this video will continually be outdated which is a good thing because I definitely like it when Lego makes more Minecraft sets. It is always a good thing to get more content but hopefully you've enjoyed this look at what it looks like to combine all the Minecraft sets that are currently available at the time of recording this video in January. Again, this was such a blast to put together. I'm a big fan of Lego Minecraft and while I haven't gotten to play Minecraft a lot in recent years, I think the last time I played must have been well, maybe around the pandemic with college friends, but beyond that, it was just high school and before that, so it was kind of fun to relive my childhood in a sense and feel like I was literally playing the game while putting all of this together into one massive display. All right, and with that, we have summed up the massive LEGO Minecraft world. Let me know down in the comments below what do you think of LEGO Minecraft as a theme. Personally, I think Minecraft is one of the most underrated LEGO themes out there because obviously they have all sorts of unique concepts, and sure, sometimes they do focus on individual actual locations that you can find in-universe and in the game, but for the most part, LEGO Minecraft kind of just does its own thing. There are countless unique examples of LEGO designers just being creative and making things that players may build in a real Minecraft world, and it was just so fun putting these all together. Minecraft feels like almost a lost original LEGO theme. It really feels to me like something that LEGO would come up with even back in the day, like the early 2000s, where they're just coming up with different unique types of play styles and locations. And Minecraft is basically one of the only original LEGO themes in terms of having just completely original location-based play that we've ever gotten. Because of the nature of Minecraft, there aren't really any vehicles. So while most of the original themes we get today are mostly vehicle focused, Minecraft gets to stand out and does something a little bit more unique by focusing more on locations and the types of unique places that you can visit when making your own Minecraft world. I certainly had a blast putting together the Minecraft combination of, again, every single set released from 2014 to January of 2023. I know some folks in the comments will be commenting, oh, you're missing this and that. Keep in mind, this is releasing January 2023, but of course, LEGO Minecraft is not going anywhere anytime soon. And if I want to put out another video like this in the future, I'm probably going to need a bigger space because I already filled up the entire space with just the 2014 to January 2023 sets. We know we have a lot more coming this summer, so let's wait until then. And do let me know down in the comments below, what is your favorite LEGO Minecraft set? What is your favorite year of LEGO Minecraft? What kinds of things do you like to make in LEGO Minecraft? And last thank you all so much for tuning into Duck Bricks. Be sure to like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way soon. You can check out my LEGO Bricklink and 3D printed Bionicle Big Cartel stores in the link below if you want to support this channel. Thank you all so much and bye bye for now.